stretching it out. Woo! I made a mess. Everybody. We're Kate and Misha of For Love of Wind. Welcome back, or if you're new, welcome. Uh, if you are new, you need to go catch up, because we're going to jump right into it. Last week, we weathered uh, Hurricane Nicole with no power, no dinghy, no nothing. We're not doing that again, so we're going to resolve that immediately. We're going to start with... It's solar and then batteries and inverter and, and get it all going. So uh, I guess let's get right into it. We got some used solar panels from Santan Solar. They sell a whole bunch of different used solar panels. I highly recommend them. They, they come highly recommended by several other channels that we follow. Um, we got Jenko 365 watt solar panels. Uh, when you buy from them, typically uh, you want to buy as many as you can afford to buy, even if it's more than you need. And then you can like Facebook Marketplace or something like that, sell the rest because the shipping is, is like it's freight shipping, right? So it's like a pallet. So if you buy like one and they have to put it on a pallet and ship it, that's X hundred of dollars. If you buy 10 and it all fits on one pallet, very similar number of dollars. Originally, I wanted some smaller panels, truthfully. But um, these panels were were bigger, more and more expensive, but not not significantly so uh, per watt. Um, but they were in Georgia, in their satellite facility, so we can go pick them up because we were in Florida. So the savings meant that they were way less expensive than buying the, the used ones out of Arizona. One, two, three, four giant solar panels. There we go, the games begin. Anyway, so uh, I'm so excited. We have these four solar panels now. Now we need a way to mount them to the tower. And you can buy very expensive solar panel mounts or have them custom made or something like that. We went down to the local metal shop and I bought several strips of square tube aluminum anodized aluminum and several strips of anodized aluminum angle iron mm -hmm. and we borrowed a friend's popper the gun that and thing's then, awesome yeah that thing was amazing if you've never used a popper of a gun it's super easy it does not require a lot of strength the the tools are actually very inexpensive and it holds really well so popper of it's it looks it looks very professional too right so misha and i uh we were not on the hard but we still had access to the boatyard, so we drove the Suburban to an empty boat parking spot in, uh, in the boat yard, the DIY yard, pulled our, all our aluminum out, and got to cutting.
we ended up going down to three panels. We sold the fourth panel uh, on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, we built this rack. What'd you think? It turned out great, actually. It turned out a lot. I don't want to say it turned out better than I expected because I know that we're, we're capable of doing it, but it, it turned out really professional, which did kind of surprise me. Like, I feel like if we had paid a lot more money to have it done, it would have been the same you know they might not have used uh old boat exhaust tube that we got from a guy who was changing out his exhaust on his power boat to ins to insulate it on the tubes okay, we have holding. weathered we have weathered 50 knot gales and everything held together Ampere time uh, makes a great battery. It it works perfect for us. If you're going to be putting them in an RV or in a cold weather climate, you need to do your homework and maybe get a different battery or a battery with an internal heater. I actually got four. I got the 190 amp hour, not the 200 amp hour, because of their shape. The 190 amp hour are very long and not very wide, and the poles are on the end. So I can have all positive on one side and all negative on the other side. The 200 amp hour are a little wider. They're more shaped like an 8D battery, but the poles are on one side, positive and negative. And, and so for our bilge, for our space, the 190s, even though it was 10 amp hours less, were, were a better fit. So we got four of those, which gives us 760 amp hours of uh, electricity. I know it sounds like I'm talking a lot and she's not. <laughs> We have to put like a little bubble, like the little bubble, thought bubble above my head with like puppies in it or something like that. We have four dogs. Please don't. Let's, let's choose another thing from puppies. Horses. Dresses. Horses. No. Can it be shoes? Shoes. <laughs> shoes. Okay. There we go. Shoes. Yes. Oh, shoes. Oh, that's. So the, the order it goes in for me is puppies, horses, shoes. <laughs> you know what? I want to apologize real fast. That was sexist. It could have been guns or beer or whatever. Oh, beer's good too. Beer's good too. Beer. Okay, Misha's a beer drinker. Today we're doing big cables. So uh, part of our battery install requires some four aught gauge cable. So what I've done, don't use a box cutter. Don't use a, a knife or anything like that. I actually use one of those little windshield scrapers. I had one in my toolbox anyway. The advantage of this is you can see I can adjust the blade depth. So, and I've already cut these, but I'll show you how I did it. You, uh, you adjust the blade depth on the end here because you don't want to go into the copper. And uh, I went a little shallow, and then you just take it and you spiral around over and over and over. And if you look inside there, when I cut it, it, it it's so nicely perfect, like it left little pieces of rubber, right? So, so there's just some pieces that are, that are that you have to pull a little hard just to get it to come off. Uh, and that's what you want. You don't want to cut any of the copper strands. You just want to pull the little pieces off. So there you can see as I'm, as I'm stretching it out. Woo! I made a mess. So I'm going to pause that for a second. And we're back. Now we have the sheath off. We have room to, room to work so I don't knock a cup of water off onto the floor again. We have our hydraulic crimper ready to go. We didn't cut any copper strands at all. Nothing came out in this. Nothing came out in that because we were very, very careful. You want to crimp this on there, not use one of those bolt-on lugs or something like that. Uh, and you need, you need a powerful crimper. You can use hydraulic ones or for 4 aught they also have some uh, nice hammer ones where literally you put it on concrete and you, you hammer it. Uh, the hydraulic crimpers are easier, more expensive. Uh, I didn't buy this. I borrowed this from a... Uh, fellow boater. You want a mechanical weld, right? A mechanical weld basically means that this metal is going to bond with this metal. And I've already done my red cable so you can see. If you took a hacksaw and cut through this crimp here, you wouldn't find the lug and strands of copper. You would find that at this point right here where this immense hydraulic pressure was, it has actually become one piece of metal, solid piece of copper. That's called a mechanical weld. And so that's what we're going for today. So we're going to slide our lug onto the end, making sure to get every strand inside. We're going to take our hydraulic crimper. I'm facing the wrong way for y'all to see, but there we go. Now y'all can see all of that. And then crimp. Okay. 
Let's get, see if we can get one more out of it. Okay. There we go. Pull that up. And there it is. That is a single piece of copper. And then what we'll do is we'll put heat shrink over that up to about here. And, and cover this seam here. What we don't want is moisture getting inside there where it's still stranded, right? <coughs> so let's do the other end and then we will do heat shrink. So now I'm gonna do the last, uh, this is the last one I have to do. You can see what it looks like. It's just, uh, I'll tell you a little butane torch, which I got a butane torch. Everybody should have one of these on a boat. They're amazing for getting bolts out or anything. No matter. So fire. Got the heat shrink put where I want it. And you literally just shrink it. You can use a heat gun for this as well. I think you could probably use a hair dryer if you had like massive amounts of power and didn't want to worry about it. But these little butane torches don't take any power. They don't take any time. It just melts it away. The heat shrink has a glue inside it. So, uh, as it, as it seals around the edges and everything, it glues itself down. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bead of glue. Focus, come on, dude. Well, maybe it won't focus that close. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's it. It's easy to do. Everybody needs to have a small butane torch or a big butane torch. We have a small butane torch and then we have a whole bunch of bottles to fill it. You can see down here, you've got the inverter going in, the new inverter. It's huge. It's so much bigger than the last one. Oh my goodness. I took out, uh, I don't know, probably 40 feet of 2-aught gauge cable, and I'm putting in 20 feet of 4-aught gauge cable. I'm so excited, you guys. This is a very rare sighting. I don't think I've ever seen it before since we've been in Cape Canaveral. This is really cool. Take a look. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading the instructions. <laughs> Kate's been working on finishing up the battery install and the inverter install today. Everything is up and running and appears to be working as it's supposed to. There was two battery banks. Maybe that's beneficial for some reason. You want to cycle them or something like that. I got a whole bunch of parallels, a whole bunch of batteries in parallel. Uh, so there's no point in, here's all my, you know, they, I got, there's a fourth one behind there. You can see running through these cables. So I don't need to have like, oh, are both banks on? Is one bank on? Is one bank off? If I need to disconnect a battery from the bank, I'll just come down here and, and pull it off the bus bar. I mean, I guess if you only had two batteries, it'd be okay. And this thing originally, when we bought it, it had three 8D batteries in it. Two 8D batteries on one switch and one 8D battery on another switch, which really is extra dumb to me. But uh, maybe there's a reason for it. If there is, please leave it in the comments why you would have two different sizes of banks and a switch where you can set it to both, which I guess is all three in parallel at that point. I don't know. Uh, let's fight about it down there. <laughs> I'm going all one bank uh, into the into the inverter with a one with. I'm still using the same switch that has one, two, and both. 
it will just be on one. Um, that's it. The boat is now powered. This has worked really, really well. We we came down to Fort Pierce, and we went into a, a marina for a mechanical issue. That's a coming video. Uh, but we're in a we're in a slip, and we didn't plug in. We stayed on the anchor for a week, and, and we didn't plug in. We, you know, obviously not plugged in on the anchor, but we came back to the slip because of that mechanical issue. We didn't plug in for like like a week and a half. We ran the Starlink all day long. You know, we watch we watch news on on YouTube TV at uh, in, in the mornings while we're doing breakfast. We still run the blender. Yeah, we microwave lights and computers and camera equipment. As you can see here, we have 1,095 watts of installed solar, and we hit 1,200 watts. That's 109 percent output. So. Could not be more pleased with our Jinko commercial grade solar panels. They're am uh, ammonia and salt resistant. Uh, the whole system is working really well. I mean, you have no complaints. No, no. So far, it's been wonderful. I haven't, I haven't had to notice. I haven't noticed, and I'm not the solar expert by any means. Cade has tried to explain this to me like 12 dozen times already, and I still between the watts and the amps and the volts and I just don't get it. That's his department. But we haven't had, I haven't noticed a difference whether we're on shore power or on solar. I haven't noticed a difference. Yeah. So I haven't had to worry about it. And, and in my mind, that, that's, that's a win. That, and I'm in my happy, mind, happy that's happy. the goal. It, if she doesn't think about power, that's what I care about. So uh, that's it for this one. Uh, lots, of, lots of power. We're set. Lots of links in the description this time. Uh, both YouTube videos and, and equipment. Um, I'm very pleased. Thanks everybody for watching. Please don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. Ring that notification bell and follow us on social media. If you're not at Instagram and Facebook, we are For Love of Wind. And we'll see you guys next time. Next time we get cheap and decide to take down our own rigging. Right? Yeah. yeah. That turns out. Oh, yeah. Let's see how that turns out. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.